Good afternoon. And today I will be talking about Earth-Sun relationships. So, the Earth and the Sun have a very interesting dynamic. If one of them is too far away from the other, well, we would all die. But it's also interesting because the Earth has a tilt and that causes our seasons. So over the next little bit, I hope to shed some light on Earth-Sun relationships. So the first thing that you need to know is some important tidbits. Things like the winter solstice, which is on December 21st, and the summer solstice, June 21st. Both of these are give or take a day. Um, these are important to know because the winter solstice is the shortest day of the year. The summer solstice is the longest day of the year. And then we have the spring equinox and the fall equinox, March 20th and September 23rd. Again, give or take a day. These are important because the Earth gets 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of sunlight. I mean, darkness. Um, this is important because of how it hits the Earth. It's hitting it equally across the entire planet. The reason why it doesn't hit equally all the time is because of Earth's axis, which is roughly 23.5 degrees. It changes a little bit. The, the axis does wiggle, but science lets us keep the 23.5 for simplicity's sake. So, the sun just likes to stay between 23.5 degrees north and 23.5 degrees south to be directly overhead. And this is important because these are areas that get consistent sunlight throughout the entire year. <clears throat> but anywhere north of that has major seasonal changes. Um, where I live, yeah, my, my winter days are quite short. Um, and then you even have shorter days up in the Arctic Circle, in the Antarctic Circle. So that's 66.5 degrees north and 66.5 degrees south. These are important because there are days out of the year where this area is in complete darkness and complete sunlight. Um, and again, that's because of the tilt of the earth. So what causes the seasons? It's the tilt. If you can look at this illustration I have here, um, this is at one of the solstices. So it is giving more daylight on this part of the earth. It's the northern hemisphere is at that moment tilted toward the sun. In the winter solstice, the southern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun. During the equinoxes, both hemispheres get equal lighting because they are, you know, kind of next to it instead of in front or back. Kind of think of it like a car. If you're in back of it, you're only going to get part of the light. If you're in front of it, you're only going to get part of the light. Well, if you're to the side of it, you're going to get the full light on one of your sides. So it's getting full light. <clears throat> now, when the sun's rays hit the earth, there's a unique thing. Um, have you ever taken a flashlight and shined it at a wall? Now, if you shine it straight on, it's a concentrated beam. But if you shine it at a little bit of an angle, it kind of makes itself bigger. That bigger area is called an oblique ray. And that's because it hits a larger area. There's a longer distance for some of the light to travel. Meanwhile, vertical rays are smaller areas. It's a pinpoint distance. Again, the best way I can think of to do it is a flashlight. Take a flashlight and shine it on a ball. You're going to see what oblique rays and vertical rays are. Now, 
when you're talking about the sun and earth, there's some important terms to know. And this is because if you're going to calculate where the sun is overhead, which it's always going to be between um, 23 degrees, 23.5 degrees north and 23.5 degrees south, you need to know these words. So you have zenith, which is where the sun is at its highest point. You have altitude, the angle between the horizon and the noon sun. I also call this elevation sometimes because when I think of altitude, I think of like distance from the seafloor to like a top of a mountain. So thinking of it like elevation sometimes works a little bit better. Um, so I've seen both terms though. Declination is the latitude where the sun shines directly overhead. And a lima is a device that is used for tracking the sun's path and declination throughout the year. Um, I do have an example of one in this PowerPoint. It is not the easiest for you all to read, um, but it's the one I prefer. Um, you can find others online but this one is the one I like better. It gives you a better accurate reading. There's the subsolar point, which is the location on Earth where the sun is shining directly overhead at the moment, AKA zenith and subsolar point are related. Um, sometimes you can get a little thrown off by that. Okay, you might hear the, hear the term slow and fast. If you have slow, it means the sun has reached its zenith after the local 12 p.m. And if you hear fast, it means the zenith has been reached before the lo local 12 p.m. So it's just telling you if the sun reached its highest point at noon, before noon, or af afternoon. So that's how that goes. Um, Yeah, I basically covered everything in there. All right, so calculating the elevation of the sun. And this is where the analema comes in. This is where you need to know um, what your latitude is, things like that. So what is, these are the things you need to know. Latitude of the location, which we're gonna call L, and the declination of the sun, which we will call D. I thought this would be easier if you had a formula um, and I got to explain something about my formula, um, but we'll get to that. The total number of degrees separating the two locations is called the arc distance. You have to subtract the arc distance from 90 degrees to find the sun's elevation, and we call this E. So we get the formula 90 minus L minus D equals E. If L and D are in the same hemisphere, you subtract the two values from each other and then subtract them from 90. If L and D are in different hemispheres, there's two ways this can go. It depends on your analema. If your analema goes from positive 90 to negative 90, then you're going to still subtract them. If they, but if they're all positive numbers, then you need to add the two together. The reason for this is, you have to remember that you're going to be in two different hemispheres. What I like to do though, is because I know it's in a different hemisphere, if it's below the equator, I use, um, I just subtract it. Um, and I use a negative degree mark. It's easier um, because you're going to still add them together. A negative minus a negative is a positive. So it still works. Okay? Um, so there, there's a couple of ways to do it. But you'll see in my examples how I do it. That's the same hemisphere formula, it's the exact same. 
if it's different hemisphere formula, it would be 90 minus parenthesis L plus D parenthesis equals E. But again, it depends on how your brain works. My brain is very math oriented. It depends. It, it really does on, on how you can see it. This is the analema chart. So if I was looking for, say, let's go to what my example is going to be here. Um, December 21st, I would go to right here. And I would figure out what that degree is. Well, it's 23.5. I know that because it's going to be the winter solstice. Um, but you can also figure out the equation of time in minutes. You know, is it sun fast? Is it sun slow? Um, but you need this number over here. So it would be 23.5 if I brought, the, brought it all the way over. All right, so here's some examples. And here is where you'll be able to see <laughs> what I was doing. Um, if I had made sure I had written my other negative in. I didn't. Whoops. Um, anyway, Anchorage, Alaska, 60 degrees north. Um, so this is going to be our L. December 21st is going to be our um, date. The declination of the sun on December 21st is 23.5 degrees south. Um, so, what we're going to do is plug it into the formula. 90 minus parenthesis 60 minus, and then I put it as negative 23.5 parenthesis. That gives you your positive still. That will still get you your positive. For someone who has a brain oriented mind, a math oriented mind, that makes more sense. Um, so once you do the math, you get 6.5 degrees. So that's the angle the sun is above the horizon. So that's your E. Now in Seattle, Washington, if I did it, um, that's 46 degrees north, which is our L. May 1st, the declination is 15 degrees. So our formula is going to be 90 minus 46 minus 15, which will equal 59 degrees. So our elevation is going to be 59 degrees above the horizon. All right, if you need more examples on how to do this specific type of problem, please send me a shout out in the comments and I'll see what I can do. But I hope I helped in some way.